Well, so far this session, we've heard of a regional transportation tax plan from Senate leaders and a statewide tax plan from the House. But today, Democratic Senator Steve Thompson introduced his version of a statewide transportation plan, which also includes a protection for property tax relief, an annual grant to Georgia homeowners which may be in jeopardy because of budget shortfalls. What it would do was give the people of this state the opportunity to vote on a statewide sales tax for the purposes of transportation. It doesn't limit it to roads and bridges, which has been a constitutional issue in the past. It doesn't limit it to the motor fuel tax. But the funding would create $2 billion a year, which is really the money that will take to solve our problem, provide connectivity and alternative modes of transportation in this state. And it's way past time, 25 to 35 years past time. It was time before we ripped up our trolley tracks which was the most intelligent thing we, idea we had. But in that constitutional resolution, with the, with the verbiage that we've chosen to make it tax reform, we include, to put in constitutional format, the homestead tax exemption for now and in perpetuity for the, for the citizens of Georgia, so that that tax exemption will be saved and that nobody can take it away from them. That gives you a gain of $1.6 billion a year for transportation and $400 million a year back to the taxpayer. It's a good proposition. I stand open to hear other ideas and trust me, I have been in the majority and I have been in the minority. And because I'm in the minority now, I don't look for this thing to go sailing through here. I offer anybody the opportunity, co-op it, hijack it, take it, I'll sign it with you or I'll stay off of it, it'll help you. But take advantage of the idea of saving this homestead exemption for people that pay the freight so that young people can afford to buy houses and that old people can afford to stay in them. Do not take this tax exemption away from them. What kind of projects do you envision statewide when it comes to the $2 billion that this could generate? Well, you see, ICT and T21, both of them on the federal level, have incentives for alternative modes of transportation. In our Constitution, the motor fuel tax, uh, you cannot spend it on anything other than roads and bridges. This particular money lists broad transportation uses. That means it'll be freed up to address transit, light rail, uh, 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 bike lanes, but most particularly uh, infrastructure, highways, roads and bridges also. And this again would be a one penny? One state. penny paid for one third by people from out of state, but $400 million will go in the public's uh, uh, pocket. The people that are stakeholders that actually buy property and have a homestead exemption, it'll protect it and keep anybody from taking it away from them from now on. And can you explain again how the out of state people end up paying for this? Right. Well, it's a transient. People spend sales tax here even though they don't live here. So if you look at it, it's always been projected at about one-third. Again, this would be a constitutional amendment. So like the lieutenant governor and speaker's transportation plans, the people would vote on whether or not to impose this one-cent sales tax increase.